In this chapter, first, we will relax and unify our UVW mapping for our amulet. Secondly, we will use ZBrush's cavity masking tools to create black and white masks, which will be used for blending between dirt and metal textures in Keyshot. All right, so now that we're done with the modeling for our piece, what we're going to do next is, uh, first, we're going to relax the UVs on this piece, and then we're going to extract some uh, masks that we'll be able to use for mixing between textures once we go to Keyshot. So for example, here is a, a render of our amulet, and you can see in here, see how all the little swirls, they have like the dark, almost rusty, dirty area, and then uh, we have some like edge highlights, things like that. These masks that we're going to create from ZBrush will allow us later uh, uh, to be able to mix between these, so you'll, you'll see how it sets up. But anyways, first thing that we want to do is um, remember how we had the UVs that were maximized just for the one space here so that we could do all that uh, nice sculpting on our crest. What we want to do now is go back and actually re-relax our UVs so that everything is uniform and we can use it for um, getting these masks out. So what we want to do is go back to that Z plugin, uh, UV Master, and we're going to click on polygroups because this technically still has polygroups. And the other thing we're going to do here is we're going to need to say work on a clone. So over here, you'll see a new subtool pop up in a second. So let's say work on clone. And now we have a low poly uh, model that's right here. And by default, it always switches this texture for some reason. So this is the lowest level. Uh, you always have to do your UVs on the lowest level of a, um, a mesh. So I'm just going to flatten this again so that you can see what we had previously. Remember, we had the, uh, the area here that was maximized. And everything else is really small. So now we want to have everything completely uniform. So I'm going to say unwrap. I'm going to keep symmetry on. I'm going to turn on polygroups. I'm going to say use existing UV seams. Actually, I'm not even going to worry about that. Let's just keep it like this and unwrap and see what happens. We'll give it a second up here. Should go fairly quickly though. And if you're at home, just give it a minute. Uh, sometimes it takes a couple minutes to process depending on um, some of your computer settings. If it's a really heavy model that you're using at home, this could take a few minutes. Uh, but since I kept my low poly mesh still pretty light, uh, it was able to do this pretty quickly. So let's say flatten. Let's take a peek. This relaxed everything quite nicely, actually. Um, since everything is uniform, I'm not even going to worry about moving anything else. Uh, this is nice. I'm not going to be able to get any bigger space for my UVs here. So I think this is perfect. And um, we're not going to go in and have to hand paint or do anything. I'm not going to take a screenshot of this. I'm just going to unflatten this, and then we're going to copy those UVs, copy, and then we're going to click back on our original high poly uh, mesh, which I think is over here, yep, and now we want to say paste UVs, this will take a minute, you'll see it processing up here, and now it should have our updated UVs on. Uh, a way to kind of confirm this is a lot of times I'll just go down and I'll throw a texture map onto this, so go to texture map, we can click in here. Let's just pick a generic checkerboard. And once we put that on here, notice how all the checkers feel evenly sized around everything. That means that um, all of our UVWs are unified and this will work perfectly for what we need. So I'm gonna turn off the texture. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is start playing with masks. So I'm gonna close this section here. And then our masking, um, we're gonna come into here. There's one section that's called mask by cavity. Expand that. By default, you'll see that it says blur to two uh, intensity. I think it should be at 100. Let's just put it at 100. And um, let's just click this and see what happens. So what I want you to look at is you can start to see how just by default, it goes through and adds different dirt and things like that. Well, it's not dirt. It's just actually creating a mask that's in here. So for example, if we were to start painting on this, you'll notice that it doesn't affect the areas that are masked. But uh, we're not going to sculpt on this. What we want to use this for is for creating texture maps or mix, mix, uh, mix maps that we're going to use later. So what I need to do is I need to increase this blur. Let's pump this up to something like 27. Just play around with it again. And what I'm trying to do is get a little bit more dirt build up between these or mask build up, I guess you could say. So you can make it as clean or as dirty as you want. Like I want mine a little bit extra grungy dirty. So I'm going to make this even stronger, uh, or I'm going to blur it even more. 
So 37, 47. Let's try something like that and see how strong it gets. I think that's about as strong as it's going to get. I think that looks pretty good. Notice how it puts all this nice um, mat in between here, all the uh, thing. That's going to be really good for us later when we're mixing between those textures. So now all you need to do is if you come here and you say create alpha, click that. And now you can see over here on the left, it actually makes a alpha mask for us. If you look uh, underneath the map, you can see it says width 248 and height by 248. You can actually adjust those settings if you wanted to get something bigger. For our purposes, 2K is going to be fine, but I do want to demonstrate this to you. So if you come over here to texture map, sorry, not texture map, I mean UV map. Down here, you can select any size that you want. So for example, if you want to extract masks that are at 4K, or even if you're poly painting and you need to extract something at a different resolution, this is how you control it. So just really useful to know where this is. So for example, let's go back to that masking section and let's create an alpha again. And it created a new alpha. And now notice how in the uh, settings underneath the white image, it says width 496 by height 496. Um, that's great. So that's how you know how to control texture maps, masks, any of that type of stuff in the future. For me, like I said, I only need this at 2K, so I'm gonna come back here again, click 2K, let's do masking one more time, create alpha, and let's take a peek here. Yep, sorry, there you go, it's at 2K now. So what we wanna do is we actually wanna export this image. So we can do this by bringing in our alpha section here, let's click this, and then with this alpha selected, up here you just click export, and then let's find a place for you to save these. Um, you know, if you've got the tutorial online, I recommend maybe just go to images, uh, images, texture maps, PSDs, um, from our station, PSD set. Again, I'm just trying to be organized here. I think I'm gonna make a new folder called masks. From ZBrush, or actually, I'm just gonna call it masks. So let's go in here and you can do PSD, TIFF, bump, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna keep it as a PSD since I am going in as a PSD. I'm gonna call this Amulet Dirt Mask. Let's save that. So now we actually have that map saved and if we were to go to Photoshop, I will just show you. Sorry about this, I don't have it maximized properly. Okay, masks, and let's just open that and take a look at it. Okay, so now you can see that nice um, masking that's all set up on our UVs that we relaxed. And you can kind of imagine how this can be used later for us to mix between things. One thing I want you to notice is there is a little bit of gray value that's in here between some of these. So I think it's good maybe for us to just uh, adjust the levels on these just a tiny bit. Adjustment, levels, I'm just basically, see how if we go this direction, it gets uh, darker. I'm just trying to remove some of those um, mix values between here because I want it to feel somewhat cleaner on top of these sections and then dirty only in these crevices. So I think that's pretty good. I'm actually going to resave that. And let's go back to ZBrush now. Or sorry, one more time back to Photoshop. I want to show you another thing. So uh, the next thing that we're going to do, it's up to you. There's like a really subtle thing that we can do later in the tutorial. And that's where you can actually create some nice edging, uh, almost like highlights that show up on these edges. So right now we exported one that's dark in between all these cracks. Now we're going to create a different one that will work for the edging right here. So ZBrush is somewhat good at this. I'll show you the best uh, results that I'm able to get using a, a technique that I like. So if you come down here to Mask by Cavity, underneath Masking, um, expand this Cavity Profile. What I want you to do is see the uh, focal shift is at default by negative 90. Change that to positive 90 just by typing that in there. And then um, we're going to probably bring our intensity down a bit. Let's maybe bring it around 15 or something like that. Let's mask by cavity and see what happens. Okay, so now you can start to see where it's masking out sections around here where it gives you a little bit of highlights around the edges, stuff like this on, on the tops, which can be kind of a nice... 
uh, result. I'm going to turn this blur down and just play around with this a bit. See what different settings you get. As you can tell, after you adjust the blur, it tends to bleed less from the side. And also, too, uh, what I want you to recognize is it does a little bit of nice highlights just around some of the edges of our little swirly patterns. And especially over here on this side, the thing that I really like is see how in these top areas it's getting it nice and uh, uh, bright. So imagine that these surfaces are kind of banging against different things over time and it keeps the metal extra clean and shiny on those top edges that are uh, facing camera. And I think the setting that we have here is pretty good. One thing though I don't like about this method with ZBrush is for some reason the settings don't work super well on the most uh, outer exterior edge of this. So a lot of times if you want to have that stuff fire up you may want to go in by hand and just remove some of the masking. So that's what I'm going to do real quick. Before I do that, I'm going to turn off this alpha and I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to start removing some of our alpha. Um, remember right now what we're doing is I'm holding down control and alt on the keyboard to remove some of our mask. And then you can just come through here and start painting some uh, stuff out if you want to be able to later get those edges to highlight. I'm going to make this brush really really small and it's up to you you know if you really want to have a lot of control over this you could uh, do this in all sorts of places to get some different highlights and adjust things for where you do not uh, like maybe how the procedural effect of the mask works out or up here you know for example maybe on these little broken sections you want to emphasize it more that could be a good opportunity to come in and hand paint that mask a bit cleaner so that it feels like this edge is really going to be firing up later whenever we have uh, different metal on it. This thing is kind of cool to use too, like for those of you that use Substance Designer or Nald, um, you can do a lot of this really quickly procedurally with smart materials and different things like that. Uh, for those of you that work in video game pipelines, you're probably very familiar with that process. But since this tutorial is using ZBrush, uh, primarily I did want to show you this in here, even though this is technically probably not the way that I would do it if I was in a production environment because I need to work as quickly as possible. That's not me speaking badly of ZBrush because it's awesome, but uh, it's good to be able to have every tool in your repertoire so that you can work quickly and efficiently as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop talking for a minute and um, what you'll see is, as usual, the video is going to get sped up a bit while I go through here and uh, do this a bit more. And then once I'm done with this, just like we did for the cavity, we're going to go through and we'll export a mask for this too. Okay, now that I'm done uh, hand painting those masks for the edges, I'm going to once again say create alpha. And we'll see the new alpha pop in over here. And then we're just going to come over here to our alpha section, which is also here up top, and then export. And this one I'm going to call alpha dirt highlight. And I'm going to call it also from ZBrush. So we'll save that off. And uh, finally, the next thing we're going to do, just really quickly save your 
subtool because it's really important that you do not lose your um, UVs that we created for this. So amulet H, I'm going to call it I. Save that. And then, uh, yeah, I think we are in pretty good shape for the masks that we have brought out of ZBrush. In the next chapter, I'm going to show an alternate method for creating and extracting masks using the program Nald. This tutorial and its downloadable content is available now on my QBrush, Gumroad, and Steam stores, which are linked in the description below. Watch the following video to see what is included with your purchase. If you purchase this tutorial, here is a preview of all the bonus content you will receive. Firstly, in ZBrush, I've included three different versions of the amulet. One, my final sculpted version with all the ornamentational details and destruction. Two, just the sculptural details like ornamentation. Three, a version without anything so you could follow along and create your own during the process. Secondly, you will receive the final Keyshot file demonstrated here, which contains all of the texture maps, lighting, and everything that is shown during the tutorial. The thing that I find really useful about this is having access to the material graph and seeing the complex custom materials that are created during the tutorial. This will really help you with understanding how to create your own complex materials in Keyshot. Next, you will receive all of the final PSD files showcased throughout the tutorial, including this gold-painted Mount Fuji design with all of my different layering processes, as well as the custom crest base that is used later for sculpting in ZBrush based off of masks. Also, you'll get all of the final texture maps that are showcased during the tutorial, such as these, which are all tileable. You will also receive all of the original videos in downloaded format at their full high definition resolution. Also, I have included dozens of high quality personal art images such as my Dark Souls 3 High Lord of Walnor fan art, which inspired me to create the Amulet tutorial to showcase the techniques I learned and developed during the process. Whether you purchase this tutorial or follow along for free on Facebook or YouTube, thank you for your continued support and I cannot wait to see the epic amulets you create soon.